the last concept I'd like to cover before we finish our unit on rotational motion is the centripetal force. So the centripetal force is the force that uh, causes an object to keep turning in uh, rotational motion. So for example here we have a, uh, some object and it is uh, running around in a circle uh, at a constant speed. And for this to happen, uh, this requires an acceleration that is pointing towards the center of the circle. So this is sometimes called the perpendicular acceleration or the uh, centripetal acceleration. And uh, you know, as we talked before, uh, when a force is applied uh, perpendicular to the motion of an object, it causes that motion to turn. So to quantify the uh, amount of force that is required, we need to find this uh, centripetal acceleration. So the centripetal acceleration, and this is distinct from the uh, parallel acceleration. So the parallel acceleration, uh, that is the uh, related to the angular acceleration, so that is the uh, radius times the angular acceleration, and that comes from when the uh, uh, speed <coughs> when the speed of the uh, rotating object increases or decreases. However, when the uh, object is uh, going around in a circle at a constant speed, uh, there still is a acceleration required to keep it turning. So this acceleration uh, is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius, and it also can be uh, found using the radius times the angular velocity squared. Uh, these two are uh, the same thing. We're just replacing the uh, uh, velocity uh, with the uh, radius times uh, omega. Uh, so yeah, so uh, what that means is that we can find the acceleration required to keep this object uh, turning. And so the force is then going to be this acceleration times the uh, mass. So the uh, centripetal force is going to be the mass times the velocity squared uh, divided by the radius of the uh, curvature. So yeah, so uh, sometimes people talk about the centrifugal force. So the centrifugal force is kind of the inertial uh, force that you feel. So if you're uh, inside of a uh, car that's turning uh, very sharply, it kind of feels like you're uh, you know, moving in the opposite direction that the car turns. There's not really a force there. What's happening is you are, consider uh, you are going in that straight line, and then the car is turning underneath you, so it feels like you're feeling a force. But the true force is the uh, centripetal force. So yeah, so uh, this uh, force is always going to be perpendicular to the uh, direction of the motion, and it's going to point towards the center of the turn. So uh, the classic example of thinking about how this works uh, is when you're taking a turn. So if you're uh, driving in a car and it's traveling around a flat circular uh, track, um, so we want to be able to find the maximum velocity uh, that the uh, car can go uh, considering the, the uh, coefficient of friction uh, and the uh, radius, radius of curvature of the uh, uh, curve. So, you know, before we get started, we really want to draw a free body diagram. So our free body diagram tells us that if we're on a flat surface, then the uh, weight force and the normal force, uh, they're equal to each other here. And then the friction force is uh, what is providing our centripetal force, and it is pointing towards the center of the circle. So uh, that means that if your uh, frictional force isn't large enough, if uh, you're driving on ice, then you're just going to go in a, in a straight line and you're not going to be able to make the curve. So to solve for the maximum velocity, uh, we want to find the uh, value of the uh, friction force. So the normal force is going to be uh, the weight force times the, uh, which is the uh, mass times the uh, gravitational acceleration. And so in this case, uh, since it's uh, flat, uh, the friction force is going to be our coefficient of friction times the uh, ma uh, mass of the uh, vehicle times the gravitational acceleration. This is then set to be equal to the centripetal uh, force, and the centripetal force is the mass times the uh, velocity squared divided by r. So notice uh, the masses cancel out here, so that means that the coefficient of friction times g is equal to the velocity squared over r, and if we solve this, then we get that the maximum velocity is equal to the square root of mu times r times g. So that's telling us that the uh, smaller the radius, so the smaller the radius of curvature, the tighter the curve. So that means that then the uh, vel maximum velocity that we can go gets uh, smaller. Same thing with coefficient of friction and uh, g, I guess, if we're uh, driving on a different planet. So this allows us to find uh, the, uh, you know, how fast you can go to make a curve. 
So to work an example of this, um, so you're going to do one of these, but we'll do one here uh, real quick. So you are exiting the highway and you uh, need to slow down on the off ramp to make the curve. And so it's rainy, so this uh, coefficient of static friction is very low, it's 0 0.2, when normally it's like uh, 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. So the, radi the radius of the curvature uh, is uh, 70 meters. So uh, then the question is, what uh, speed do you need to slow the car to in order to make this turn without uh, sliding uh, and potentially losing control? So this is really what we just did, right? So the uh, centripetal force is equal to the mass times the velocity squared over the radius and the uh, friction force. Uh, so while we know this is the coefficient of friction, uh, it's the static coefficient of friction too, times the mass times the uh, gravitational acceleration. So um, in this case, we want to set these two equal to each other. Um, so that's the uh, situation where we can uh, make the curve. And uh, when we do that, we see that the masses cancel out. So uh, we can rewrite this with the velocity squared divided by the radius equal to the coefficient of friction times uh, g. So at this point, we have everything except for the velocity, right? We have the radius, we have the coefficient of friction, and we had no g. So we can then uh, solve for the velocity. So yes, yeah, so I'm plugging in the numbers here. Uh, it's 70 meters in our case. And then uh, that gives us uh, v squared is equal to 140. And if we solve this, this is 11.8 meters per second, or I don't know, a touch less than 25 miles per hour. So with uh, this uh, rather uh, uh, lousy uh, coefficient of friction, uh, we have to drive pretty slowly in order to make this curve. All right, so you have a question very similar to this one to do, and I think this ends our unit on rotational motion. So we'll look at um, uh, harmonic motion in our next class, but uh, until then, I guess you have your homework to do, but um, good luck and take care of yourself.